Good morning, saints. Blessings and grace to each one of us. And may God just bless you so richly and draw you closer to His side. We read in James chapter 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. My brethren, I suppose that includes us also because we are the spiritual Israelites, the spiritual Jews. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, and you may be perfect in entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Count it all joy when you go through all these fiery trials and temptations, because God has got a purpose. He's got a, a, a reason why he allows you, and so that you may be perfected, and your, your trials will finally produce patience. Your trials will finally bring your faith to perfection. Why this um, law of contrast that God is using in our lives, that God just wouldn't let things go just every day, like the song says, you know, you can't go to heaven on a rocking chair. While others, you know, fought to fight for the price, sailed through bloody seas, says the song. No, if they have gone through that, we'll have to go through it also. But if you take the thunders away, as we said, then if you take the storm away, there'll be no rain. Yes, if you take night away, we will never appreciate the day. So God uses the contrast so that we can appreciate the positive. And yeah, we, he puts our faith in. The thing that actually also struck me is when we visited Israel some time back, we, they took us to an oil press, which is close to Mount Olives. And Mount Olives, you know, that's where most, there were, there's many uh, olive trees there. And there are many places all of Israel that specializes and these olives are so precious, you know, it's, it's a slow grower. It takes about almost six, seven years before you can harvest. It's a slow grower, but it represents also the believer. Yes, it also uh, represents the believer. The oil represents the Holy Ghost, as we said yesterday. And the wine, which is the stimulation of revelation, the believer is also represented in that because you know even in revelations if, uh, when you'll uh, chapter 8 when you read all the seals and the, when he opened actually chapter 6 and then in the third age where it was really dark the dark was and he said touch not the oil and the wine you have killed so many of my children, put them through the press. And, and, and even Josephus, the historian, says, how can God sit with his arms folded and allow his children to be burned at the stakes, to be killed, to be sawn asunder, to be hunted down? And, and, and the, he doesn't understand to have oil, you have to put the olives through press. And I've, we've seen the big grinding stone, man, huge grinding stone. It's just com cut out completely out of rock. It's got a, the base, of course, is rock. And then this one that turns around, as you've seen many times in, uh, in many uh, films, how the uh, Samson press that, pushing that... Uh, press because they can either grind seeds, maize corn, or you can grind 
olives. And as they push that thing and it goes over those olives, it bursts, it presses it in <clears throat> until the oil flows out. Now they've got little cavities for it to run through and then they catch it up. But it's got to go through this grinding mill in order to have the oil. God has got to put you through that press. No wonder Christ had to be crucified. He was pressed so that he can produce the spirit. And he said, uh, I commit my spirit into your hands. And then the Bible also says, and he gave up the ghost. And he told the disciples before he died, wait in Jerusalem. And I will send you the comforter. What will he do? He will teach you and lead you into all things. He produced the Holy Spirit to guide, lead, and fill us. But there would have been no Holy Ghost if Christ did not go to Calvary. Yes, there would have been no blood if Christ didn't go to Calvary. For us to claim and to be protected by, to be sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So it takes this milling. And you know, the thing is so huge. I, I always thought of the scripture where the Bible says, <clears throat> don't offend my little ones. It's better for you to take a millstone and put it around your neck and, and, and jump into the sea because it's so heavy. There's no way that you can ever come up with that millstone around your neck. And that's what they use the millstone to grind the olives, to produce the oil. Yes, it's a real process. They showed us there, you know, first the collection itself, the harvesting, it's unique. You, 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 they, they don't want to squash or hurt the fruit. So it's a very delicate harvesting that they do. At that time, I don't know by now, they didn't even have machines to do it because it was very delicate. And then they had to go through the washing and then go through the pressing and then, uh, the kneading, uh, when it's gathered together, and the oil is extracted from there. I pray that God will help us and help you, my brother, sister. I know sometimes you might say, brother, you don't know what I'm going through. You might say, you're not aware. And many times when people come for prayer, and then the, the first thing they say, brother, I, I can't handle it anymore. I can't handle it, but listen, the very fact that God allowed these things to come your way shows that God trusts. He's got a certain amount of faith in you that you can go through it. You can handle it with His grace and by His strength. The Bible says He will never test you <clears throat> above what you are able to bear. But with every situation, He gives a way of escape. So there is a way out of anything. Go through the press. Don't look at the press. Don't look at the crushing. Don't look at the, at the uh, torment that you must go through. Look at the end result to produce that perfect oil. Yes, that's a healing power. That's a lubricant. As we said the last time when we spoke, what does oil do? It gives light. It lubricates. It's for cooking, preparing food. And that's what the oil means. So there's a reason why God wants you to go through that. He has his purpose. Let's accept the purpose of God. Don't get excited. Don't get worked up. Just say, Lord, I'm going through this. Guide me. I don't say take my problems away. I don't say don't take my challenges away. I ask you for grace to go through them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord, that you will answer every prayer and every brother and sister that seeks your face, that Lord, that realizing whatever comes, Paul says, everything works out together for the good to them that love thee and are called according to their purpose. Sometimes when we're in it, Lord, we cannot see what's so good about this, but the end result, we don't know. There will come a harvest time. There will come a time when the tables are turned. I pray that you give everyone strength and grace to go through it all. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.